Hi guys, and welcome to another kit review. Okay, so today we're having a look at a kit from Alanga. Okay, it's in 135th scale, kit number is 035007. Um, it is their Panzerkampfwagen 2 Flam Flamingo German Flamethrower Tank. Okay, so these tanks were based on the uh, Panzer 2 Alpha D chassis, and um, their official designation was Panzerkampfwagen 2 F in brackets of AB Flamingo. The AB just meant that um, A variant tanks were built from 1940 until May 41, and the B variants were built from June 41 until March 42. Okay, now these tanks were armed with a 7.92 machine gun, MG34 I believe, in the turret, and two flamethrower turrets, one on either front mudguard. They also had, at the back here, on either side, three uh, smoke grenade launchers, so they could provide cover for themselves and for attacking infantry, and also so that if things got a bit tight and a bit hot, they could fire these and escape, okay? Like I said, there's about 150 of these made. They weren't that successful. Um, being Panzer IIs, they were prone to uh, Russian anti-tank guns and even Russian anti-tank rifles. So um, that was a bit of a problem. Most of these were, the, or I should say the survivors, were converted to uh, Marder 1 and 2 um, self-propelled guns. And the, the turrets ended up um, half of them, or most of them I would say, ended up on the um, Atlantic Wall. Okay, so let's have a look at the box. Basic artwork, you do get a commander figure with this, by the way. Okay, it does have individual track links. Lots of tools and stuff like that. So, it is a Panzer II, slightly different turret to a Panzer II. So it is quite small. Okay, so let's have a look at the side. On the side, you see it's English and Russian. So Alanga is based out of Moscow. Okay. So, um, yes, this one came out sometime after 2005 is the best I can find out when this came out. On the other side, you'll see it's basically a history of the um, Flamingo flamethrower tank. Okay. So let's have a look and see what's inside. So first thing you're going to see when you open it, and I have already had a look at this thing, is the instructions ICM okay this is actually an ICM kit this is ICM kit number 35241 it was issued in 2001 so it's basically a rebox of that kit the entire kit okay so that's the instructions you get one big bag of sprues individual track links upper hull lower hull wheels etc and a small decal sheet also marked ICM. Okay, so that's what's in the box. In a second, we'll have a look at the instructions and then carry on from there. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions. So clearly shows ICM. This is ICM's original box art. It was in color on their box. Um, all Alanga has done is removed all the details and just focused on the tank itself. You do get a brief history of the tank in four different languages, English, German, French, and Ukrainian. Overleaf, you've got your sprue layout. So there are only five sprues, including the figure. Two of those are individual track links and of course the top and bottom hulls. And then we just get into actually building. So it is a multi-part hull. You do have uh, separate axles and a torsion bars, wheels, etc. Next step, of course, is putting the upper hull on the lower hull, front glasses plate. Oh, and this, by the way, is the only diagram that shows you how to put the individual track links together. So that will be an interesting challenge. Next up, you've just got, this is one of the armored fuel boxes. The turret goes on the front. 
Um, these contain 160 litres of fuel oil mix plus the uh, nitrogen propellant tanks, okay, which could be uh, refueled from the top. So that's one of those goes on each mudguard. You've got some tools going on, okay. You do have some front hatches. There is no interior. Next step up is, and you do get separate um, engine hatches, but of course there's no engine in here either. So no interior whatsoever. So you, you right side fuel tanks going on and some tools, exhaust pipe, etc. This is your turret going together with the machine gun in it. That is the step on which your commander figure will stand if you want to do that. Otherwise, you could just keep the hatch closed. This is the painting callouts for your commander figure. And the last step is basically radio aerial and cables going on. Okay, so it's a separate cable and you do have separate cable ends. A few more tools and that's it. Pretty straightforward. You only get two painting guides. This one here is for the 101st. So uh, Panzer Abdelung F101 and 100 were the operators for the Flamingo. Okay. This one here is just an unknown unit. So it could be anyone. But there were only two units which operated the Flamingo. 101st and 100th. Okay. And that literally is it. On the back is your color callouts. They're all Humbrol colors, okay? Fairly straightforward. It just gives you the names in the different languages. Okay, and that's the instructions. So let's have a look at these, which is the ICM decals. Fairly straightforward. You've just got your standard plain white or black and white Balkan cruise. You've got your turret numbers. These are on the back quarters of the turret. I've seen a picture of a uh, captured Russian flamingo and it has got these on the back. So I'm not sure why. Perhaps it was just a way of designating that this was a flamethrower tank. I'll have to look that one up. Apart from that, that's the decal sheet. So I'll give you a still photo of that. Okay, so let's have a look at the first sprue. Okay, so as you can see, there are a few pieces missing, but I have found them. Okay, so at least they're all there, or at least seem to be. So that goes in there, and that goes there. Okay, so as you can see, this is the upper hull, and then the turret. The flamethrower units, okay, you also have down here, these are the little flamethrower turrets. These are your smoke um, grenade discharges for the back, um, either side of the tank over the on the engine bay. And of course you've got some hatches and things like that. These are the brackets for your smoke discharges, okay. It's fairly straightforward, that's your commander's hatch. All right, so let's have a look, see. And what we might do is put this one aside. There's not much to see on the base. So let's have a look at the turret. Okay, so see if I can get it in focus where. So there is some nice detail. Naturally enough, you do not have opening vision slits. You do have a couple of slits that go on here that's where your machine gun comes through and a hatch fairly basic all right as you can tell it is completely different shape to your standard panzer II turret okay so that's a little tiny turret it is quite a little tiny turret by the way let's have a look at the rest so get that in focus does have some nice we'll get that turn that around see if i can get it to focus there you go. So that is the supposed hinge details, I guess, because these did it open up. This is how they refilled the tank. Okay. That's where the um, 
little turret goes and while we're talking about it there is the little turrets okay so they had a they could turn 180 degrees on the um, front mud guards so either way all right and unfortunately this thing only had a range of 35 meters so very up close and personal flamethrower tank which is why you needed these which have a lot of flash on them that is your smoke discharges okay so they'd fire those race out through the smoke fire their flamethrower hopefully destroy whatever they were aiming at and if things got too hot they disappear back into the smoke again um, that's one of the tools so as i said this is a second hand kit it has been around for a while um, that's in several pieces so we might be able to find something out of the spares box for that spade engine starter let's have a look at the, t the hole okay so first thing i can see right there on both sides is the plastic has sagged so that's going to need filling it does have some detail on the back here but most of the detail goes on because you've got engine hatches etc and front glasses plate goes on but yes that's a bit of a poor molding there unfortunately there's a couple of your vision slits etc as i said these are the mounts for the smoke discharges smoke grenades i should say and a couple more tools okay so that is the upper hull Right, so let's have a look at the next one, which is, of course, as you can see, the wheels, the lower hull, and the two sides, okay? What you've also got here is your engine hatches, etc. Okay, exhaust pipe, various tools and fittings, and uh, that is the ends of your tow cable. Okay, so let's have a look and the first big issue i can see is with the bottom because it is actually curved quite dramatically curved too it should be like that but it's curved like that so i think this is going to be a um i'll give it a hot water treatment several times put something heavy on it and hopefully that will flatten it out now that'll be an interesting challenge especially as this is a multi-part hull. So as for the wheels, they do have some nice bolt detail on them. A little bit of flash around the edges. As you can see, there is a fair bit of flash on the actual sprue. There's not much on the parts, which is good, although there will be a bit of cleanup. Yes, it does say ICM, okay? That's the hull side. I'll grab the other one. There's the whole side, not much to see. All of the detail, as in the uh, torsion bar, suspension, axles, etc., goes on, which is what they are. Okay. That's your exhaust pipe, your jack, other fittings, etc., hooks, some more tools, which are not broken, which is good, and your drive, sprocket, idle wheels, etc. So I do like the detail on that. The only thing I'm going to have is, as a challenge is that lovely curved bottom hull, which is going to be a pain. Anyway, that is the hull and the wheels, etc.
And pretty much the only other thing I've got to show you apart from the commander figure is these two. So these are your individual track links. Um, it will be a challenge, but not impossible to put this one together. So let's have a look. Move that out of the way so you get a better look. So they look fairly crisp. I can't see any flash on them. Hopefully they will basically just almost click together and then I'll just apply glue as I go and make them in sections. Let's have a look at the other side. So there's your cleat side and this is your driven side. Okay, so really nice detail. I do like the tracks. Okay, and hopefully they will go together quite well. So that's the tracks. So that's the main part of the whole kit. And all okay, and the only other thing I've got to show you from this kit is oh, almost lost it then. Is this? So this is your tank commander, okay? So as you can see, there are a few bits come loose. Okay, that's his um, earphones. Let's turn his face around. That's the important part. Um, the face is not bad. You could get a bit of detail out of that. So that's not bad at all. It does get binoculars. So as I said, that's his headphones. These are his uh, cups that go in the ears, of course. Let's have a look at his legs. There is a bit of cleanup on the mold lines, but I think nothing unusual for figures. So let's grab his body. So the detail is a bit soft, but, you know, that's not too bad anyway. It will come up quite well. It is an early war tank commander, so he is wearing overall black. So overall black with a bit of highlighting should come out fine. Okay. And that is it. That is Alanga's Panzerkampfwagen II Flamingo German flamethrower tank. Uh, as I said, came out sometime after 2005. It's the best I could come up with as far as uh, the issue date. Kit number is 035007. It is a complete rebox of uh, the ICM kit, which came out in 2001, which was 35241. Um, there are some obvious challenges with this kit as far as the bent lower hull, etc. Um, but it cost me $20, so um, no big drama if it doesn't work out. Okay, so as I said, that brings us to the end of this one. Hope you got something from it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your likes, your comments and subscriptions. Always appreciated. And as usual, guys, until next time, stay safe, stay well. And I'll see you later.